morning. My name is Allison Case, and I am the digital editor here at The Wave. We are here today as an emergency advocacy event. This collaboration with The Wave offers our first ever digital op-ed forum. Good morning. I'd like to thank our partners in government, Assemblywoman Stacey Pepper Amato and State Senator Joseph McDonald Jr., as well as Eric Harlwick, for joining us here in support of small business owners. Today, this forum offers Rockaway's restaurant business owners the opportunity to voice their concerns over the now seemingly arbitrary restrictions placed on indoor dining in New York City. We are all aware of the devastation of COVID and how it's cost our city, our lives, and our livelihoods. However, as of August 25th, 123 people in all of New York City have tested positive, and sadly, on August 24th, three have died. And the CDC guidelines now suggest no test for asymptomatic people. The state is permitted to open restaurants with restrictions, but not New York City. Schools and gyms are about to open with restrictions in New York City, but not indoor dining. This consortium is here to speak on their own behalf, imploring the city to begin to reopen indoor dining. Before I turn the floor over, I'd like to introduce John Mazzola, proprietor of La Sorrentina here on 129th Street. John. Thank you. Okay, uh, I'm the home of La Sorrentina here in Bella Harbor. And previously, I owned the La Sorrentina in Brooklyn. Now, unfortunately, the 32 years, I posted the news. I get emotional because after 32 years in business, and this come out, the doctor do no more business because we're not allowed to bring people inside. I live here in Bella Harbor for years. Thank God I found another location over here in Bella Harbor. And that business over here. Not the way we're supposed to do it. Okay? So I don't want to go out of business again. Because uh, this is no sense that everybody's open, less salon, hair cutter, bowling, uh, beaches, pool, uh, supermarket, uh, uh, department stores. And we less in the line to open a when people talking about it next year. And you guys want to kidding me? The city is a ghost town. Everybody's going out of business because they got higher rents. And the landlord, they want money for the rent. But then they got to get it from. We have a little help from the government, and I appreciate that. That we go on to pay the bills. But this is no sense that over here in Bala Harbor, we can people can park in the street. They give me the, the permission to put a stand outside. I refuse to do so. Because there's no parking already whatsoever. So I don't got a parking more street to people who can come and park the cars because they, they all just stand outside and also in New York City. A couple of days ago a car he went over the crowd and outside eating. What is the big deal that uh, people, they got to eat outside and they can eat inside. And you can say, okay, you got 50, you can all accommodate 25 people. So what is going on? It comes as a political this? Something, something is going on with you guys that don't approve of this restaurant to open inside. Outside is okay. Why is that size okay? And people so one on top of the other. And people pass by it, 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 it's no sense. I think it's no sense that you guys, you know, allow the restaurant to do business. One guy, the inside, outside city, every place except the New York City. Why is it New York City? We pay a lot of tax in New York City. And you guys is raise the tax, the real estate tax all over. You encourage people to not pay the rent. How we gotta pay the mortgage? Do you stop the tax in the house and the building? You don't stop it, huh? So please, common sense, get the right people to advise you. You should go to restaurant owner for many years. They in business. They can advise you how far you gotta run the business. You business. My business, I know how to run it. 52 years I do this. And I know exactly what I do to protect the people, put the masks, put the gloves. What else we gotta do? Are you send the people around to give a summons, twenty, thirty thousand dollars? And you go some store, the legal authority too. 
they close on the stove because of the people pass by and, and things like that. Please, be advised or get advice, make it better, and open a New York City the restaurant. Thank That's you. it.
Something needs to be done soon because it's going to happen real quick with temperatures dropping. And when it comes down to it, we don't have indoors. We're all in big trouble. And it's not just us. Sometimes people look like, oh, the owners, you know, they just care about their business. I've been on this block for 14 years since it was a different restaurant before Hurricane Sandy. Rockaway Seafood was rebuilt after that. And, um, you know, a lot of, I have 35 people working for me. I don't have 35 people working for me now with 16 seats outside. Thank you for being open and surviving. Uh, but we need more than this, and it has to happen soon. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to invite Stacey Pepper Amato, our Assemblywoman extraordinaire. Um, very funnily, as I was beginning the uh, calls to make to our elected officials, uh, Stacey was also in the process of creating a, process, a program just like this, and it really is amazing that we have like-minded government officials, and I'd like to thank them very much for being here. Stacey. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for everyone being here. Um, I have a weird place in this conversation. I am the elected official that represents this great community, um, going down to Far Rock, way through Breezy Point, Howard B. Joe's own park. But I am also the wife of a business owner, of a restaurant owner. And why is my husband not with us this morning? Because he's going to Restaurant Depot to pick up supplies so he can save money. And many of our business owners who would like to be here today, and I thank you all for taking time out, are not here because they're doing everything possible to stay alive. And we're getting no help. As the elected official, I am frustrated, and I share it with you. I called the governor's office myself to um, advocate that there must be a day to open. And he said it. It's tomorrow. We've done everything we're supposed to do. We flatten our curve, and we are responsible adults. We are responsible business owners with local jobs for 52 years that take care of our customers, that take care of our community, and we should be able to have indoor dining. Everyone does not want to eat outside, right? We need that ability. Not even about getting cold. People want to eat back in their restaurants. We want some routine back to us. And yes, we are a community that's been hit by Hurricane Sandy. We're resilient. We will do what it takes, however long it takes, to survive. And let me say something that you said, to keep it really quick on this. Small business owners, which are our local business owners, I just took down the up. sign. <laughs> <laughs> we got a backup. Right? We're sign. proud people. And I say we as, again, I'm a pizzeria widow. I don't, that's what happens when you own a small business. But we're proud. We don't want the government's money. Right? I love when I had the conversation with the business owners. And it's nice that it was there. But at the end of the day, they want to pay their own mortgage. They want to pay their own bills. They want to keep the economy going. So we're asking the governor to give us a date when we can open indoor dining, because that's what we deserve. We're responsible citizens who've done everything right. We're looking to send our children back to school. We're looking to help be safe. We understand what that risk. We don't want to close. So as business owners, we're going to have masks. We're going to scrub down. We're going to do everything possible. We'll be there at 6 o'clock in the morning if it takes it, whatever it takes. So I'm so proud of the community that I live in, that I represent, that we're going to stand here together to be one solid voice as always. I have to say, because I'll give that introduction, the greatest part of representing this community is having a partner like Joseph Adabo, Senator Adabo, but we partner together on issues like this. And as Allison said, yes, I wanted to have a, a forum like this because our district goes from the south to the north and Senator Adabo goes further. Our businesses in Howard Beach, family-owned businesses the same way, they're hurting. And we have to make sure that all the restaurants in New York City and you said you drove five miles, part of our district, we literally could walk over the line and be in Nassau County and eat inside. Come on, it's common sense, and we're asking for that support from the governor. Thank you. Okay. So at this moment, uh, I'm gonna introduce Joseph Senator Adabo. Thank you, Senator. Uh, so this one happened, we gotta go to the whole. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. And I want to thank the way for allowing us to be here today and express our concern for the reopening of our business, indoor businesses. To our business owners, thank you and your workers for what you've been doing throughout the COVID virus. But thank you certainly for being here today as well. You know, these business owners, they were told back on July 6th during phase three that they might be open for indoor dining. And that came and went. 
And so they were then looking at July 20th, phase four. And they were told that maybe phase four you could open. And once again, they were denied to do indoor dining. We need a plan because no longer can any level of government, nor any government official, to look a worker in the eye, a worker who wants to work. They can no longer look an owner in the eye, an owner who's been suffering since March, and to John's point, maybe being put out of business. The customers, our residents, our constituents who want to eat indoors in locally and not go to Long Island, you can no longer look them in the eye and say there's a credible reason why we cannot eat indoors in the five boroughs, certainly here in Queens, certainly here in Rockland. There's no more rational reason. Because for weeks now, we have been satisfying the less than 1% positivity rate for the coronavirus testing positive. Because just over the border in Nassau County, they're eating indoors, and they're taking our residents with them. And we have been meeting those metrics, because every phase, phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four, we got to look forward to every two weeks, because we were looking at the metrics, we were looking at who was getting sick. And everybody bought into it because it was at least a game plan. There was no more game plan. It is quite arbitrary now. Because as of today, we are just beating Nassau County in terms of the virus, in terms of positivity rate. For instance, as of Tuesday, Queens tested 7,377 people. Of those tested, less than 1%. 0.9 tested positive in Queens. The rolling seven-day average is 0.8. It's actually lower than that. So it's still below 1%. Nassau County, where they can actually eat indoors, just moments away from us, they tested on the same day 5,589 people, but they tested roughly closer to 1%, slightly higher than us. And their daily average rate is the same as us. If we got the same numbers, even better numbers than, than Nassau County, why are we not allowed to eat indoors? If we're gonna follow the metrics that we followed in phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four, that we all bought into, why can't we follow those metrics now and allow us to eat indoors? We need a plan. Because right now, if there is no plan, the only other plan is for restaurants to close and workers to lose their jobs. That's the plan that we don't want. We need a credible plan, and it's time. We are safe. We can take the safety protocols. We can take the safety measures that others have done, certainly in Nassau County. But we can have indoor dining safely, so we can go to Jameson, we can go to Pico, we can go to all other places. Beach 116, Rockway Beach Boulevard, and others, we can enjoy our own restaurants instead of getting in a car and going to Nassau County. The time is now for a credible plan. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Joe Adapa. My name is Walter Sanchez. I'm the publisher of, of The Wave. I want to thank you for coming here. Queen, Chris, John, that's how you run press conference. We've been going to press conferences for 100 years, and politicians speak and speak and speak. We want to hear from you first. We have partners here as, as, as legislators, and they're going to respond to, to they know how important it is for our economy. I think that's the job of a, a community a newspaper, to really uh, do things for your constituents, do things for your advertisers, for your supporters, for the readers. It's so important to our economy to get this passed and to get this going. And I thank you all for coming. And we're going to say good night. I want to thank Allison to put this together in, in one day. We didn't do much publicity on it. We didn't want to. It's not about publicity. This is about really talking about legislators and getting our points across. So again, thank you, John D. Okay, so this is going to happen another week, two weeks. Two weeks. We organize to go to the city hall in the city. A big, big group that will then maybe be a little different when they see a lot of people, they have the same problem we have over here. There you go, Johnny. All right. We're going to organize in two weeks. It's got to happen. you got to help, help us with this. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you guys, thank you guys. Thank you. Thomas, good job Tom. Appreciate it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.